So my friends, it's finally time to unveil and unbox the LG OLED 55 inch C1. This is the 2021 model. It surpasses the CX or the C10 from last year. So the numbers are a little bit confusing, but let's get this thing open, set up and have a look to see what's different. Don't forget to hit the red button to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and click the notification bell to get my next video first. Okay, as always, for full disclosure, this is not a sponsored review. We are not being paid to say anything good or bad about it. We have bought this TV at full retail value, and all of the thoughts expressed are our own personal and genuine views. Okay, so the box itself gives away some clues to the updates on the 55C1, and it's very different in some respects to the 55CX. We will do a head-to-head -head at a later date, so don't worry about us comparing too much about that TV now. But one thing is the ultimate gameplay. That's going to be something which, with the game optimizer, we need to look at. One thing that you'll be aware of is that there's different model codes. So, for instance, I've got the C15LA. There is also, I think, a BLA and all the difference is is the color of the stand you get one which is a darker silver and another which is a lighter silver so if that's confusing you then that's the reason that's worth a thumbs up it's got to be hasn't it guys right okay so let's unveil this beast and as you can see it's very similar if you've done this in 2020 2019 maybe even before that it's very very similar but there's just a sneak peak of one big change that you can see but we'll come on to that in a second okay so we've got the long metal stand on the back that comes out first of all so if you're going to be using the stand you do need to be very careful when you take the tv out you don't want it being damaged or dropped or scratched at all so we leave all of the packaging on the tv to the last possible moment and then what i do is i do this with all tvs that i get i then lean it down on top of the box with some foam the top bit of foam inside the box which is then giving it some stability and then the tv is still in its all casing it cannot possibly be scratched and then we get rid of the rest and here you go guys there's a little sneak peek of the white back which is on this model don't know why we'll look at that in just a second now i recommend lifting the plastic just enough to either put a wall mount on the back or put the stand on because you don't need to get the whole screen out at this stage now like with last year's model you've got this stand point on the middle obviously and over on the side is the power cable which is a fixed power cable some people sometimes think that you can just literally plug this in but you can't there's no plug inside that box as you can see so don't bother undoing it you've got the cover to go over the back and then you've got your screw mounts your new remote controller which we'll go through in a second and your separate instructions for that remote a cable tie to hold it against a wall and also you've then got all of your other gumph and finally a pair of double a batteries for your remote control so the stand that the TV comes with is identical apart from the color. Last year it was black, this year it is white. I'm still not quite sure the reason why because this is the back of the TV and so nobody's gonna see it. And now the model that I've gone for, the CLA, is the lighter silver. If you went for the BLA or the other model, I'm not sure whether they're exactly the same in your region, but one is the light silver and one is the dark. And this is everything that you get in the pack. I do prefer the Samsung pack, I have to say. I think it's a lot better laid out. It's got individual compartments, but hey, you're not going to be using it very often. Right, putting the stand together is pretty straightforward. Clip it in place to start off with. You'll then need to put three screws in from the bottom and then tighten them up. And then you are ready to go on to the next stage, which is going to be attaching the TV. Okay, so then you need to approach the TV from the rear. You do, and gently coax the stand in to the bottom. You should feel a little click when it's in place, and then use the four remaining screws to tighten up the stand. And that's it, you're done. With excitement mounting and full of Herculean strength, lift the TV up, ignoring any previous right and wrong rules about carrying heavy objects, and gently pace it down on the stand. Reveal it to the world, backwards obviously, because this is a YouTube video, who on earth would normally do that? But guys, serious note, there is a layer of film that you need to peel, peel off the back. If you don't, that could have some heat issues. And there it is. That is the beautiful LG C1. What do you think of the white? Does it mean anything? Does it make any difference to you? 
All of the connections are identical to the C10. You have four HDMI 120 hertz 4K ports. You have your optical digital out, your LAN port, and your antenna, and all the other boring bits and pieces. But that's it. That is the TV. That's the back of the TV. I think that it does look better. I don't know why. I don't know why that's a good thing, but... I like the whites, I think it looks great. One thing that I'm not so keen on is there still isn't any real cable management. There's just this little clip where you put the cables in underneath, but because they're all the way over on the other side, I just don't think it works particularly well. But anyway, now the fun part to take the remaining film off and we're almost ready. Believe it or not, five minutes in, we're almost ready guys to turn this thing on. Now, one thing to note, if you haven't had one of these TVs before, the C10 and the C1 both sat on a very wide stand. So you do need quite a wide TV unit for it to sit on. This measures roughly a meter from its widest point, And the depth of it, it sits about 11 inches or just under 29 centimeters from front to back. So bear those figures in mind, guys, when you're looking at um, getting a TV stand. Right, onto the remote and it's a brand new all different completely changed for the first time in years and years there is no magic remote as we knew it this is a brand new remote with more buttons now I'm going to withhold judgment on this I will feature this fully in my full review and my head to head review now a little spoiler because I'm voiceovering this after I've already turned the tv on it feels great and it does operate absolutely fantastically but anyway I'll go into a lot more detail in the review Okay, so setting this thing up is really simple. Plug in everything that you want connected. So if you can see in the little boxes underneath, I've got my Sky Digital Box, my Xbox, my Denon amp, and on top I've got my PS5. Once you turn the TV on, you'll get this, which will be to press OK on the wheel of the remote control, which is straightforward. Press that and then your remote is connected and paired. You'll then be asked whether you want to install by a mobile device or TV. I find it easier on the TV, so I'm going to click that route. It will then ask you for your location, depending on what country and obviously state or post area you're in. And then you'll have to connect to your Wi-Fi. Once you've done that, very simply, you'll then go through a user analysis where it should, and I say should, detect everything that you've got plugged in. However, when I did it, it didn't detect my PS5 and it said my Sky Digital Box was a German Sky Box. But hey, got nothing against the Germans. Okay, the next screen is the AI Picture Pro and AI Sound Pro. You can toggle those on or off. I tend to have them on. I think that one, the sound is significantly better. And if I just shut my mouth for a minute, you'll be able to hear the difference when I click it off and then on again. Okay, it will then go into automatically program tuning. Just, you don't have to do this. If you're not gonna be using an antenna, then you don't have to tune, but it didn't take very long at all. It then goes back to the universal control settings where you can then go in and manage those settings. So here, you can go in if you wish to and call things different names and change things and reset them. So if you want to do that, you can do that. You can do that at a later date as well from the main menu screen. You don't have to do it all within here. Okay, so it'll then tell you that first use is complete and it will default to HDMI 1. So whatever you want to be the default, make sure that goes in HDMI 1. As I mentioned earlier, they're all 4K at 120Hz anyway, so it doesn't make any difference. I think on this TV, from memory, it was HDMI 2 is the eARC, so the Enhanced Audio Return Channel. So when you first press home on the remote, you'll get this screen, which if you haven't agreed to the user agreements, you'll need to go in and do that because it doesn't fully load properly unless you've gone in and agreed to those. So I recommend that you just do that straight away, right from the start, because then you won't ever see that again. So now when you go into it, you'll see that I've got different screens loading at the top. And here you can go in and load into your LG account. And again, you can get then customized settings for that home screen. And there'll be notifications like it's telling me that ITV Hub here in the UK is now available. 
So I do have to say my first impressions of this interface is really good. I like the fact that all the apps are there. They're not actually downloaded and installed, so you will need to click on those. But the one thing that we don't have the problem with in the UK this year is all of the on-demand services are there. There's BBC, ITV, Channel 4 and Channel 5, so we don't have the same issues. And some of my American friends, I'm sure you'll let people know in the comments whether you've got the same issues with some of the things. I think HBO Max wasn't on the C10, but pop a comment if I'm wrong on that. So when I was in the software screens, I checked for a software update. There was one, I ran that, and now it's recognizing that there's a PS5 game console. I'm not sure that's connected, but it is working. Now I do have to say, my first impression on standard definition TV, and HD as well actually, is it looks absolutely brilliant. The upscaling on this TV just looks incredible. Now, I will obviously do a side-by-side. -side. I've got both TVs, so I don't have to say that one's good or one's bad. It is literally my first impression, but let me know what you think. Do you think this, for standard definition TV, I think it looks pretty good. And this is just via the plastic digital um, antenna thing that I have so it's not even a proper signal when I go in in a second I'll put it onto my sky satellite and you'll get a better idea now the user guide and all of the TV guide and things are this nice light gray looks very modern looks very stylish it operates really quickly there were no glitches everything loaded fine I'm um, obviously if you're in a different location then you won't have free view play but you'll probably have a similar service looking very similar if you go into guide you can go into the full guide and then you can scroll across and it will load up the channels and what's on and again that seemed to work pretty well there weren't any problems at all all of the menu settings are also very different from before with that same stylish background there seems to be less options than before but i'm going to spend some time looking into this and i'll probably do a separate video of all of the menu screens let me know whether that's something you'd like and I will then obviously also look at what different settings and settings that I've set my TV to and I'm happy to share obviously those with you. At the moment it's still on its default. One thing that I did want to just show you quickly in this video were the different picture modes. It comes with Eco as, as the default um, but that didn't look particularly great. Standard looked pretty good, I thought that looked fine when we clicked onto that. Other modes include Vivid. Is there anyone alive that actually uses Vivid mode? I'm not sure. Uh, eco mode, as I mentioned, Cinema mode, Sports mode, Filmmaker mode, which is also quite an interesting mode. That's where it will set automatically. And in the settings screen, you can set it to default so that if it detects Filmmaker mode, it will automatically switch. Um, or you can do it manually here. You also have ISF Expert Bright Space Daylight and ISF Expert Bright dark space night and again those are going to be different modes that I check at different times of the day so I probably will likely do a video purely on the menu setup and the different settings and how that affects it but I'll probably do it um, you know a few weeks in right guys so I do have to say my first impressions of the picture quality you know I do think it is better than the C10 and I don't really know whether I'm right until I do get them side by side and literally obviously go through the exact settings on both but the first impression coming from the C10 which I've been working on over the cast of the last couple of days that is my default TV um, it just this feels first impressions that it's better out of the box you know this is just adverts on the TV and I think that they are looking just really really good um, I don't know, let me know what your thoughts are. One thing that I'll run on probably a monthly or a bi-monthly basis is a screen uniformity test, just to check that we're not getting any screen retention. I mentioned that in my previous review on the C10. After nearly 11 months, I've not had an ounce of screen retention at all. So I'm not expecting to be any on this. But, you know, I'm loving the picture so far. I think it looks really good. And the one other thing that has caught my attention is that sound does sound better. There sounds to be much more bass than previous but again I'll do a full test on that. How about gaming because there is that gaming mode which is optimized for gaming now and again just a quick snip here for you guys but it does look incredible it looks insane it's absolutely stunning to look at I've got another new game which is um, coming today and I'm going to be really excited about trying that on it but this just looked incredible and again I'll go into more detail and do a separate video probably for this TV with the PS5 for instance but overall, I have to say, it looks completely stunning. 
Again, I'll do the head-to-head -head because I don't want you spending your hard-earned money if you don't need to. And if there is no difference between the C10, I promise you guys I will tell you I'm not being paid to say anything good or bad about this TV, as I've mentioned. This is the LG demo staff, and boy, does this look good on it. It is absolutely just, you know, it does look stunning, and it does look, I don't know why, but it looks a mark above what, um, what the C10 is. But I don't know whether that's just new out the box my excitement or whatever it is guys but you know let me know what your thoughts are so that's it for this video guys we've unboxed it we've made it to 15 minutes now thank you so much if you are still here thanks for watching this video please do consider giving it a thumbs up that does help the youtube algorithm just to get it out to more people and it helps me then buy more tvs which i can then bring you 100 percent completely independent reviews on thanks guys have a great weekend and i look forward to seeing you on the next